How many times have you been out in the field taking photos that you thought were absolutely amazing, they look sharp in the back of your, your LCD screen on your camera, only to find when you get home on your larger screen, the images look like poo and they're not sharp and when you zoom in, they look a little bit on the blurry side. Guys, this happens all the time and it happens to the best of us. But if you stick around to the entire video, you'll learn some simple, actionable steps that you can take to say goodbye to soft photos and say hello to beautifully sharp images that really highlight the beauty of the landscape. Now pull up a seat, let's go. Yeah. Hey, I'm still here. I'm not going to set up my camera and again and get another angle. I'll talk to you right here about this. One of the first things that you want to do is you want to adjust the Doppler. When you look into the viewfinder of your camera, the image you should see should be clear and sharp. If it isn't, it might be because the Doppler needs to be adjusted to your specific eyesight. From the factory, the Dioplers are usually set to work with people's eyes that have 20-20 vision. So if this is not you, you'll need to turn this little knob by the viewfinder to adjust the view for your eyes. Though this has nothing to do with the sharpness of the images you take, it's hard to determine if your photos are sharp or if the view that you have isn't sharp either. Next guys, you wanna invest in a good, solid tripod. Another simple thing that you can do to get sharper photos is to invest in a quality tripod. Now note, the operative word here is quality. Now, this isn't to say that a cheap tripod won't give your camera the stability that it needs to get sharp images, but cheap tripods wear out and you'll find that in six months or a year, you'll have to buy another one. Well, by the time you buy two or three cheap tripods, you could have bought yourself a decent one. Anyways, the issue aside, having a tripod enables you to get sharper images because it will provide the stability than holding your camera in your hands. Next guys, get yourself a camera remote. Now, where a good tripod gives your camera a stable base for getting tack sharp images, a camera remote does the same thing by removing the need to touch the camera to trigger the shutter. Even the gentle act of pressing the shutter can be enough to negatively impact the sharpness of the images you take, so having a remote to trigger the shutter is a quick and easy way to get sharper images. Now, there are all kinds of remotes out there from $10 infrared remotes to fancy multifunction remotes that cost like a hundred bucks and control exposure, do time lapse, change your kids' diapers, and even makes you dinner. Yeah. Eh, maybe not the dinner part or the change diaper, but you get the point. If you don't need all those features of an expensive remote, spend 10 bucks to get a basic one and you'll see just how much of a difference it makes in the sharpness of your photos. At the very least, use the camera's self timer so there's a few second delay between when you press the shutter button and when the photo is actually taken. Usually about two to three seconds will give any vibrations that you cause from hitting the button time to dissipate your next you want to choose the right aperture one of the most common beginner landscape photography mistakes people make and that i made guys when i first got started back in the day is to cram the aperture down all the way down at like f22 to maximize depth of field i always thought hey if it's f22 the images could be sharper mm -mm. the problem with this is that as the aperture gets smaller diffraction becomes worse in a nutshell diffraction occurs when the light passes through a small opening like that in the aperture of the lens that you're using the light disperses and as it does so the sharpness of the photo decreases so instead of using f22 opt instead for a mid-range aperture like f8 or f11 doing so reduces the effects of dispersion and capitalizes on the sweet spot for most lenses the sweet spot is the aperture at which the image is the sharpest out of your lens this is just about the easiest step that you can do to improve the sharpness of your photos it just takes a matter of changing the aperture within the camera next we have use mirror lockup now if you have a dslr another layer of protection that you have to take sharper photos is to use the mirror lockup function in a dslr there's a mirror in front of the sensor that flips up when the exposure is taken the act of this occurring can cause vibrations inside the camera which can cause photos to be a little bit less sharp than they could be now every camera brand has a different way to enable mirror lockup so you need to consult with your camera's owner's manual for specific instructions but once you enable it the only thing that will move during the exposure is the shutter and that will give your camera a better chance of getting a nice sharp image as an alternative you can simply put your camera in live view which locks the mirror in place but if you prefer to use the camera's viewfinder you will need to use the mirror lockup next we have turn off image stabilization when you shoot handheld image stabilization is a great feature that helps you get sharper images 
However, guys, when you have your camera mounted on a tripod, the image stabilization actually can cause blurriness. This is because of how the image stabilization system works. Lens-based image stabilization uses a floating lens element, which is shifted in the opposite direction of the movement to compensate and get a sharp photo. Camera-based stabilization systems actually shift the sensor to correct for the movements when shooting handheld. But when your camera is on a tripod and image stabilization is on, a feedback loop can form where the stabilization system detects its own vibration and starts to move the compensation. The result in which is a semi-blurry photo. So one of the first things that you can do to get a sharper photo is just to make sure you turn off the stabilization system each time you put it on a tripod. Then of course we have focus at the best spot. This goes without saying, but to get a nice sharp photo, you need to focus at the right spot. Many photographers use an old rule of thumb that says to focus one third of the weight into the shot. So for example, if I look at my camera's LCD and use the rule of thirds grid as a guide, this tip tells me to focus at the bottom most rule of thirds line. The problem with this is that this method isn't all that precise. Sure, it works when you're in a pinch, but if you want the ultimate sharpness, you need to go a different route. On the one hand, you can use the hyperfocal distance technique, which finds the ideal combination of the aperture and the focal length to maximize depth of field. That means that if you're shooting with, for example, 24 millimeter with an aperture of f8, there's a specific distance from the camera where I should focus to maximize depth of field. It might sound complicated, but there are, thank goodness, apps and handy tables that will help you identify the best hyperfocal distance. You might find, however, that this technique gets you nice sharp foreground, but leaves the distance background a little bit on the soft side. Instead, you might try the double distance focusing techniques, which is a super simple way of going about this. When you set up this shot, identify the nearest object that you want to have in focus, then double the distance, and that's the point of which you should be focusing. So if the nearest object I want to focus on is five feet away, I would double that to 10 feet and use that as the point of which I want to focus the shot. Doing so ensures that everything you want to have sharp in the foreground is sharp while ensuring that everything in the background elements retain optimum sharpness as well. Perhaps the best method for getting optimal focus and maximizing depth of field is of course focus stacking. Focus stacking Stacking involves taking several exposures with a different focal point. So you might take one image with the focal point is the foreground, for example, and another one where the focus is mid-ground, and then another one where the focus point is in the background. Apart from the focus, each image would be exactly the same. Then you would combine the images into a composite photo in post-processing, which capitalizes on the different focal planes to create one beautifully sharp image with an expansive depth of field. It's important to know that you need to use your camera on a tripod for this method. And that's it guys, it's that easy. As I've discussed, there are loads of different things that you can do to get sharper photos. Give these tips a try and see what works best for you in your workflow and reap the benefits of having photos that are nice and sharp from front to back. I'll be back with more practical photography tips, so be sure to hit the like button if this video is helpful for you. Hit the subscribe button if you're currently not subscribed and Hit the bell to be notified as we come out with new videos. All right, my friends, so your turn to get out there and take your best shot. And that's the point of which you should be focusing. <laughs> Bastards. <coughs> Seriously, I think I just inhaled half this can when I was spraying myself there. Ow, oh, bastards. <laughs> oh, blind. Man down, man down. Not <laughs> 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 bug spray.